Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 29th of July, 2011. 150 years ago this day, Enomia was discovered by Annabale de Gasparis. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that right. The trivia question today is, which of the following six statements is untrue? Enomia is the largest stony asteroid. Annie was awarded the gold medal by the Royal Society of London. Enomia was the first asteroid to be discovered by a woman. Annie discovered eight other asteroids. An asteroid, a lunar crater, and a lunar valley are named after Annie. And Annie was an Italian. The answer will be given at the end. Since the last time we met, the Sun has produced 11 more C flares, but unfortunately no more M flares. However, that still is an average of a flare every two hours, which is quite impressive and is about the level of activity that we should be having at this time in the solar cycle. So let's see where those flares are coming from. We have three very impressive regions on the Sun. Region 1260, which has continued to grow. Region 1261, which is also showing signs of life. And Region 1263, which just came over the northeast limb and we're just beginning to get a clear view of what it's like. In the meantime, Region 1262 in the northwest has disappeared. There is a region with three or four small sunspots called pores between where 1262 was and the current region 1260, but it has not been numbered. NOAA numbered one of the regions in the southeast, region 1264, but there are still two other small regions uh, down there that have not yet been numbered. In the movies from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory, once again I'd like you to concentrate on the three regions in the northeast. See how they develop and change. In fact, here I've got a movie of the development of Region 1260 over the last 24 hours. Note how the leading spot gathers the smaller spots towards it. And that's strange because all those spots are the same magnetic polarity and similar magnetic polarities should repel one another. So there are obviously much stronger forces going on here than just the magnetism. Another interesting thing is to look at Region 1263 near the East Limb. You'll notice that all the other regions in the north have negative polarity leading, that's black, followed by positive polarity. Region 1263, like the others, has a negative polarity leading area, followed by a positive polarity trailing area, but then there's another area of negative polarity. Now this is an instrumental effect, and if you look at my video on negative sunspots, you'll understand why. The link to that video is given in the description box below. In the Transition Region movie, I'd like you to look at the whole sun and look for eruptive events. There seems to be a paucity of them recently, in contrast to what we were experiencing just a couple of weeks ago. In the two coronal movies, like yesterday, I'd like you to contrast the activity levels in the three active regions. Which one is the most active? Which one is the least active? At the moment, most of the activity is coming from region 1260, the leading region. However, overnight, a few more of the events came from region 1261. And as yet, despite the fact that it has the biggest spots, Region 1263 has not produced anything. Is that consistent with what you're seeing in terms of the amount of variability in these regions? If so, then we have a potential flare diagnostic. If not, well, it's back to the drawing board. Despite the apparent lack of eruptive events, we have a beautiful coronal mass ejection off the southwest limb. But when we look at the stereo data, we see that it was on the far side of the sun. In fact, most of this eruptive activity seems to be, at the moment, on the back side of the Sun. Next let's see what ACE is telling us about the solar wind. We see that the temperature and the speed of the solar wind has continued to decline and the density has remained low. The high energy electron flux has remained at high levels for the last 24 hours and once again because we've had no major flares the proton flux remains brain dead. The auroral zone remains very quiet and the KP index has been varying between 0 and 2 over the last 24 hours, which is also very quiet. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at the B5 level, the sunspot number has risen to 84, the radio sun intensity has gone over 100, solar wind speed is at 300 km per second with a density of less than 1 proton per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions remain quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is going to be that we have a good chance of getting more sea flares, there's still a chance of getting an M flare, though I think that that is reducing as time goes by. And the chance of getting an X flare I think is quite remote. Sunspot number will remain relatively high. We have a good chance of getting coronal mass ejections. 
The solar wind speed will probably go higher, but there's a very poor chance of getting a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours. In the slightly longer term, we see that there's a small faint region due to come over the southeast limb in the next 24 hours, but I saw no significant activity behind the limb in the coronal movies, so I don't think it's going to amount to much. If you want to find out more about what's going on in the Sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see earlier editions of The Sun Today, go to my channel and they're all listed there. As for the trivia question, the incorrect statement is that Anomia was the first asteroid to be discovered by a woman. The reason for that should become obvious when you see a picture of Annabali de Gaspers. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.